Hey everyone and welcome to the channel. So today we get to take a look at this 2023 Ford Bronco Badlands Edition. Huge shout out to Carolina Auto Direct for providing this SUV for me today. Check out their website. They have a massive selection of pretty much brand new inventory. That link is down in the description. So this Badlands is finished off in Area 51 and we'll go over the MSRP once we go over all the specs and features and get this out on the road. So let's start off with what powers this Badlands because there are two different engine options. This model here has the 2.3 liter EcoBoost four cylinder engine. It's paired to the seven speed manual transmission, pumping out 275 horsepower, 315 pound feet of torque, sent through the four wheel drive system. This weighs in right around 4,700 pounds. It'll do zero to 60 in around 7.7 .7 seconds with a top speed of 128 miles an hour. It also has a fuel capacity of 16.9 gallons. You'll expect to see around 17 miles per gallon in the city, 17 out on the highway. This also has a wheelbase of 100.4 inches. Its overall length is 173.7. It has a width of 75.9, a height of 73.8. Its ground clearance measures in at 8.4 inches. And it also has an approach angle of 37.2 degrees, a breakover angle of 29 degrees, a departure angle of 43.2, and it can also ford through 23.6 inches of water. As we move on to the exterior styling now for this Bronco, let's start off with the steel front bumper because this has a few different configurations and it's also why this has a very good approach angle. Now, as far as the lower section goes, you can see there's a skid plate, but you can also take some of these parts off if you want to, including that bull bar there. So it's very configurable just depending on how you want it to look and then also what you want to add to. You can see there's some aftermarket pieces just behind there. And then of course the bull bar goes right in front of the Bronco logo. I do wish it was a little bit lower so that you, way you could see that better. But we have the classic white letters with the gray backing for that entire grill. This also has the LED headlights, DRLs, and turn signals. So you will see those on both sides, of course. And then there's some active air dams right in the center there, or active grill shutters, which will provide a little bit more cooling for this EcoBoost engine. And then for the hood, you'll see really nice lines coming down it. And then we also have these pieces right here. So what you can do, you can actually remove the panel that's supposed to be right there. You can put light bars up there, or you can put a wire from there and extend it down this way. So if you are off-road, that can take some of the branches and just keep them away from the paint and anything like that. So we have the light bar up top, which I think looks really good too. And then as we work our way to the side, this has a set of 17-inch wheels with the two-tone design to them. This also has the plastic fender arches. It has the Bilstein tuned suspension. And then for the Badlands model, this gets a set of rock sliders, which is of course important when you're going off-road. We have the plastic covering for the side mirrors, which are actually fixed to the base of the windshield here. So when you open the door, you will notice that they are not connected. So obviously you can take the doors off of the Bronco, so that makes it a little bit less heavy and it's much easier to store the doors not having that bulky side mirror. Now this model also has the three-piece hardtop, so you can remove the front two panels there. And then you'll notice a really cool line that runs just above the height of that door handle. And then for the rear, this has the full-size spare tire with the backup camera right in the middle. We have the steel rear bumper with all the parking sensors, the tow hooks on both sides. This even has a towing capacity of right around 3,500 pounds. Now, as we work our way to the rear cargo space, all I need to do is pull on this handle and you can actually lock the vehicle by pushing on that button. We have the shock there. It's very lightweight, even with that full-size spare. And then from there, we can manually open up the glass. Where uh, being the two-door model, this is still a four-seater. But as you can tell, you can fit some items in the back. It's not the largest amount of cargo space, but that's what you are going to expect if you buy the two-door model. But you can also fold the back seats down. So you do actually have to pull that bottom outwards a little bit so you can see the difference there. And then from there, I can pull on this strap and the seat can collapse there. You can adjust the headrest as needed. So you can fold those down to get a little bit more space just depending on the items that you are putting in for the day. And then from there, I can just grab on the center of that seat there and bring it back up. So it is pretty versatile. If you're not looking for a four seater, you still have the capabilities to put in some smaller items. 
And then as we work our way to the interior, we have the uh, keypad, so you can lock and unlock it using that or the key fob itself. And then for the door panel, you will notice some of the exterior color, which is nice to see. There's the release handle, a net in the lower section, and then an area that says lift. So this is where you can grab it to easily remove the door, and you can even fit the doors in the back there. So you can, of course, take them with you. And then we have a really nice trim accent just behind that release handle. Now, as we look at these leather seats, they have a nice design to them. They are manual adjusting, so I pulled on the lever to put that backrest forward. And then from there, there's the bar up front where you can slide that forwards if you need to. So with that, we can put that bottom back into its position and hop into the back seat, which is not that hard to get back here. And I actually have a good amount of space. I'm five foot 10. We have some auxiliaries right in the middle. And as far as headroom goes, I have three, maybe four inches. So honestly, I could be comfortable riding around in the back. So you're not sacrificing any back seat room. If you don't need to use these that often, you can still put people in the back. We have cup holders, a lot of glass. So it's very, very open in this smaller size SUV and pretty practical too. We do have some carpeting for the hardtop here just to give it a little bit more insulation. And you can see we have more of that netting an area here where you could place some tools, any equipment that you wanna to strap to the back of the seats, you have that option and it's just as easy to hop on out. Now from there, I can lock the seat back into its position where you can see the orange stitching, the Bronco badge right in the middle. It's a very nice design to see. And then we have the grab handle on the side. So it's not in the traditional location, but it's pretty cool with Bronco spelled out. And then as we move on to the steering wheel, you'll see it's completely covered in leather. On this left side, there's all the cruise control settings, volume, and the lane keeping assist. On the right side, you will see a Bluetooth and voice commands along with seek and track. And the rest of these will go over that digital gauge cluster. So in order to do that, let's fire this up. Being the seven speed manual, I need to have my foot on the brake and the clutch. And you can see with the engine start stop button, it resembles the headlight and the DRL, which is a cool touch. Well, let's fire this up. And looking at this gauge cluster, you'll see miles per hour on that left side, along with the engine temperature. And then using those controls on the right side of the steering wheel, if I scroll down, now we can pull up fuel economy. There's also the trip information to monitor, as well as an off-road tab. You can look at TPMS, and then you also have a My Configure. So if I go into that, you can add and take away any of the items that you just saw, just depending on what you would like to see. We can go all the way back. If we go into a menu now, which you just saw here, we can go to a trip and fuel, look at the off-road again, even pull up navigation so you can monitor all of that front and center. There's also phone, audio, and settings. So not a whole lot of information, but it's nice to have to be able to use all of this. And then over on the left side of the steering wheel, you will see we have the hood release along with the electronic parking brake. All the headlight adjustments and some dimmer switches are just above that. You will see one air vent tucked away. We have some nice trim accents running across the entire dash with a few controls right in the middle. So on this left side, this is the sway bar disconnect. We have the front locker, rear locker, traction control, and then the hazards. You can get a few other technology features. I believe this is missing the trail turn assist. I could be wrong, but there, sh there could be one other item there, just depending on the package that you go with. And then you will notice there's an air vent on both sides of the touchscreen system right in the middle. So if I go to the home screen right now, you will see navigation along with phone and media. And then in the lower section, these are all of the presets to quickly get into this information. So these are all fixed. This even has Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. You can go into a few settings here just to configure this the way that you would like to. And then we also have features like the driver assistance and you can even go into the towing. So you have all of these standard safety features and then you can go through this checklist depending on what you have hooked up to this Bronco. Now underneath that, you will see power and volume for the radio as well as tuning. This has the engine start stop feature, a few other audio controls, and then all the climate adjustments are laid out very nicely underneath. You'll see the temperature dials, fan speed. These are even heated seats too. And then there's a few other researchs surrounding that. 
You'll notice a little bit of storage along with another auxiliary. And then we have the different driving modes as well as the four wheel drive selector and even the downhill assist control. So if I just use that toggle, we'll go back to the gauge cluster where you can see the different driving modes from normal and eco. There's also slippery, mud and ruts. There's sand, Baja, and the last one is rock crawl. So just depending on the terrain that you are going on. So you have a few for on-road and a few more for off-road. You will see the diagram change too. And then look at the seven speed manual transmission. So you have these six gears for normal driving. There's also a crawl gear that you can use while you are off-road and then reverses up and to the left where you'll see that backup camera up here. There's also a top down view if you are backing up to a hitch or you just need that angle, you can use that. And then obviously we have the rest of the six gears. Now behind that, you will see the Ford badge there and where this is built. A little bit of storage just behind that along with two cup holders. And then right in the middle, you will see the window controls along with the side mirror adjustments. And then for the center armrest, you can actually lock this if you need to, but if we open this up, there's a good amount of space for any items that you'd like to place there. On the passenger side, you can see Bronco stamped into that airbag cover. And then there's a good amount of storage in that glove box as well. We'll take another look at visibility from the driver's seat. You can see just how open this is. And then up top, there's even some factory switches for all of these auxiliaries. So if you wanna hook up exterior lighting, like the one on the top of the windshield, you can set it to one of these so you can quickly turn it on and off. If you have compressors so you can air back up when you go off road, it's really cool to have that. And then the dome lights are just in front of that. As we set off now behind the wheel for this Ford Bronco, this model has an MSRP of right around $49,000. So you're right around the $50,000 mark for this trim level. And like I mentioned earlier, with some of the features that are missing, you can go with higher trim levels just depending on your budget. I think there's five or six different trim levels that you can go with. You can also go with the four-door version as well if you want a little bit more space. Now the four-door will also tow the same uh, weight capacity, 3,500 pounds. But for the two-door Bronco, especially with the seven-speed manual transmission, this is my first time driving, getting to be in the manual Bronco. We went to a Bronco off-rodeo event where we got to take the Broncos off-road and they were a blast to drive. I was in the automatic, but nonetheless, it was still amazing. So if you are a three pedals kind of person, Ford is still keeping the manual alive. It's awesome to see that for this 2023 year model in a world where manuals are going away. You can still get the manual. You can even get it with crawl control, which is standard with it, calling it a seven speed manual transmission. And with that, I haven't used crawl control, but I'm assuming that you could probably put it into crawl, go off road, and you might not even have to touch the clutch coming to almost a stop. You should be able to utilize crawl at like one mile an hour and not have to worry about the clutch point. You can just focus on the gas or the brake. You can put it into a few of the driving modes, put it in the downhill assist control, and even just let the vehicle do the driving for you. So it's pretty cool that they even went to that extent to put in a crawl gear to make it more usable, I'll say, off-road. So you don't have to use the clutch as much and then put even more wear on the clutch itself. So 50 grand, you get a very, very capable off-road vehicle that's also comfortable to drive on the road. It's not crazy loud. It has the hard top on it, which is removable, obviously. So it's going to be a little bit more windy than a traditional SUV, like a 4Runner or something of that, um, of that size and body style. And as far as the manual goes, it doesn't have a quick zero to 60, but we got up to speed just like that. And so it's fine. I like how light the clutch pedal is. It's easy to go through these gears. Now, personally, I like manual sports cars. So the shifter is very long feeling to me versus like a short throw style on a car. Maybe you could do that if that's something that's more your style. So it, it shifts like a, um, like a truck SUV type of manual wheel shift. Now, hopefully you guys haven't been able to hear that high whine pitch noise. Just to point that out, that is definitely the light bar 
on the top of the windshield because I've been in enough Broncos to know that that is not a factory noise. If you if the camera can pick that up, that's definitely that light bar. So I would uh, go with a different light bar. But aside from that, it is comfortable. It's very nice to drive out on the road. And it's also really easy to uh, take the roof panels off. There are four clips on each side. You do the driver's side first, then you can pop off the passenger side. You can put them in the back with you if you wanna take them with you. You can also fit the doors back there too. Unfortunately, it's gonna be one or the other. You either have the roof or you have the doors off. But let's give it another acceleration here from second gear. It's easy to go through these gears. I'm impressed. So if you want the manual, it's definitely a good option. And one more acceleration from second. I will say, it's not a slow vehicle. It has 315 pound-feet of torque, so you can, you can get up and move. Even though it has that slower zero to 60 time, this is not meant for zero to 60 but I wouldn't say it's sluggish. It, it feels like it gets up and gets out of its own way, uh, which is of course nice to see for the engine size because if you want the seven speed manual, you can only get the 2.3 liter EcoBoost four cylinder. So for that engine, you know, you're not really sacrificing much to get the manual. And you know, we're up to speed. It, it feels very nice. I've been in some other SUV and pickup trucks with manuals and I gotta say, this is pleasant to drive. I do like it for this style of vehicle. But as we're behind the wheel now for this $50,000 Bronco, it's pretty nice. I've always wanted a Bronco uh, since they came out. I owned a Jeep Wrangler for a few months and that was an okay SUV. Uh, I know there's the Jeep life, a lot of people like the Wranglers. Personally, it was a lot of fun, um, but once I saw the Bronco come out, I had second thoughts on getting a, another Wrangler. I would buy a Bronco over a Wrangler all day long, and obviously that's a personal taste and choice, uh, but I can definitely see getting a Bronco and maybe going with a manual transmission. My first real drive behind the wheel and I am not hating this at all. Very, very nice. I like the interior for this model too. We are missing, um, I believe it is the trail turn assist, which if you go with a higher package, you can obviously upgrade to that. But this is a nice on-road on driving experience. And if you wanna see the Bronco off-road, we made a few videos on that when we went to the Bronco off-rodeo. I won't be taking this one off the pavement, of course, but check out those videos. They're a while back on our channel. Just, just, it's amazing how capable this is for an independent front suspension. On the Wranglers, you have the solid front axle. The independent front suspension gives this a much more comfortable on-road driving experience, but with that electronic sway bar disconnect on the fly, you can push that button, get a little bit more travel out of that independent front, and it's pretty much almost as capable as a Wrangler unless you are truly rock crawling where you need the capabilities of that solid front axle. So from a driving as a daily perspective, this is much more comfortable on the road because of that independent front suspension and for the 5% or so of the time that someone's actually taking this off the pavement, it is still truly incredible for the dirt situations. So it's honestly the best of both worlds. Really nice on-road, incredible capabilities off-road, and you can even get one cheaper than 50 grand. You can get one probably in the high 30s, low 40s, if you truly just want a basic model um, it's going to be missing some of these features, but it just depends on what you want to do. Take the doors, the roof off, have that open experience, and just cruise around in your Bronco. It's definitely a sweet SUV. I love the six-speed manual. But I think that is going to wrap it up for this walk-around review and test drive in the 2023 Ford Bronco Badlands. 
Once again, a huge shout out to uh, Carolina Auto Direct for providing this SUV for me today. Check out their website, that link is down in the description. If you enjoyed today's video, give it a huge thumbs up, smash that subscribe button so you don't miss out on our daily uploads, and I will see you all in the next video.